Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Good Night Night on the Nintendo Switch. Now, Good Night Night launched with an awesome retro aesthetic that will evoke a Legend of Zelda, a Link to the Past for a lot of people. And at a sale price of only $11.99, if it can deliver on an awesome dungeon crawler experience, this could be a seriously interesting game. And today, that's what we're going to be answering. Now, just before we get started, don't forget that if you like these videos and you want to see more, the best way to support the channel is to hit that like button and also subscribe if you aren't already. Now, just to get started, Good Night Night itself is based around a pretty comedic premise. Even by the title itself, you can tell the type of play on words humor that'll be present throughout the whole game. Now you start out the game as a knight falling off of the tower you're currently trying to scale. And basically when you hit the bottom of the tower, the useless company that is at the bottom there is more than happy to see you arrive because no one wanted to venture forth into the dungeon. So they throw you right back into the action because guess what? You've pretty much lost all your memories. Now after that, you'll be getting little tidbits of storyline here and there through different act interactions with different characters, but this is really not a game based around deep storyline, it is based around dungeon crawling. And ultimately, the game plays out as a roguelite dungeon crawler with procedurally generated rooms and also enemies. You'll have different biomes as you move throughout the dungeons that will basically give you an overall different theme from one to another, but pretty much every biome after that will be divided into four room designed floors. When you complete a floor divided into four rooms, you'll then progress onto the next floor with the option to make a stop back at your base camp. Also, after a certain number of floors, you'll be presented with a boss battle. If you beat that boss, you will basically get access to the next biome of rooms, which will also result in a pretty significant difficulty spike each time you jump to a new type of area. Now, the combat system in Good Night Night is also very original. It evokes very much a twin stick shooter with basically one joystick controlling the movement of your character and the other one controlling your field of vision or also the direction of your attacks. And that field of vision in this game is actually very important because basically you can only see what is directly in front of you. Everything else on the screen will be in a sort of fog of war, if you will. Even having an obstacle like a pylon in front of you, you won't be able to see what is directly on the other side of the pylon, meaning that basically enemies can get the jump on you at any moment. However, luckily the enemies also share this field of vision, meaning that if you're on the other side of the pylon, they can't see you either. Now, rounding off the basic combat system, the rest is pretty simple. You have your sword slash that is on your ZR trigger and basically your shield block that is on your ZL trigger. You also have a stamina bar, however, that you have to keep an eye on, which does convert the gameplay in almost like a Souls-like fashion, meaning that you can't just jump in there and hit the slash button continuously. You sort of have to land a couple attacks, back off, build up your stamina, go back in, back and forth. Now, although the combat system, other than the fact that it has a stamina bar, is pretty simplistic, where there is a lot of depth is in the progression system to the game. Because basically in this game, it is not your character that progresses, but rather all your experience that gets attributed to the items you're carrying at the moment of your return to base camp. Basically, as you're venturing through the dungeons, you can pick up any number of special items, which will generally affect all types of gameplay. Some will give you longer or stronger attacks. Other will give you a faster turn speed as you're attacking. Some will make you jump further and some will even make you more stealthy. And as I pointed to earlier, as long as you don't return to your base camp or rest, there is no limit to how many items you can carry. However, unfortunately, the only way to replenish your HP is by resting or returning to your base camp. So eventually you'll have to do that. And when you return to that camp, basically you'll only be able to carry a finite number of items based on the weight of each type of item. However, that is where the progression system jumps in. All the experience that you get throughout your dungeon gets attributed to the items you were carrying at that moment. 
And as your items upgrade in level, the weight for each item lowers, eventually actually hitting zero, meaning that at that point, that item counts as a free upgrade that you can carry at any moment. So eventually, as each item becomes free to carry, your character becomes more and more powerful and being able to equip more and more upgrades at once. Now, the second part to this progression system is how you acquire these items, because some will be randomly picked up as you go through the floors of the different dungeons. However, as you kill monsters, you'll be able to gather materials from those dead monsters. And when you return to your base camp, you can actually transform those into new items that you can exchange at a specific vendor. Making that part of the gameplay almost resemble a mini version of Monster Hunter. Now to push that point further, there's even a stealth mechanic to the combat system in this game. Because as I said earlier, the monsters only see what's in their field of vision. So if you manage to sneak up behind a monster, you have the option to either attack it from behind or even try to capture it, done with a specific in-game item. And if you actually capture the monster, you have a higher chance of getting a better pickup item from that monster, meaning you'll be able to access higher level items quicker. Now, if it took quite a while to explain the mechanics of this game, that is because it is blending a huge variety of different mechanics. And that's actually the first thing I want to praise about this game. It actually manages to blend all those various mechanics in a very cohesive fashion. When I actually first saw what this game was trying to do, I was worried that eventually some of these mechanics would get lost in translation or would just be implemented in a disappointing way. But I was totally wrong. This game really meshes them together very, very cohesively. And ultimately what this results in is this game has quite a level of depth that I wasn't expecting from a roguelite entry at only $11.99 on the Nintendo eShop. Now, if we roll through a few of the other things that this game does really well, well, number one, the graphics are beautiful and very clean. They're not quite Nintendo level, but they do evoke a link to the past, and I would say they do honor to that gameplay's legacy. Secondly, if we talk about enemies in the gameplay, you are getting a really nice variety and mix, especially at this price and this scope of game. Basically, each new biome will introduce new enemies and new traps, and also, each enemy will have a really distinct attack pattern and also force you to use really different methods of dealing with each type of enemy. And lastly, the boss fights that you come across are very entertaining and a nice switch of pace. Because since the levels go through pretty quickly, being only four room patterns, well, when you get to those boss fights, it's really nice to have a switch up and basically have to adapt your gameplay all of a sudden to a new obstacle. So overall, I think you're getting the feeling that this is a pretty complete and pretty solid game. However, there are a couple of things I would like to mention before you jump in and purchase this one. Now, the first thing you should maybe know is that this game is paced much, much slower than a lot of other roguelites out there. It is really made so that at the beginning, the gameplay even does feel almost a little clunky, but that is done by design because your character without upgrades doesn't attack very fast doesn't turn very fast, but all these things will be improved as you power up and you get the proper items. Your attack distance will increase, your attack speed will increase, your ability to turn quicker will increase. All these things will change as you get your power ups. So the clunky design at the beginning isn't because the controls aren't responsive. It's because by design, your character is made to feel weak without his upgrades. And that sort of brings me into point number two. The only downside I can really see about this game, because it is offering, as I said earlier, a pretty well-rounded package, is the level of competition out there right now in the rogue light genre. I mean, we have a lot of huge games, and price-wise, they're not that far off from Good Night Night. For example, for $20, you can pick up Hades. When it's on sale for $12.50 generally, you can pick up Dead Cells. And these are much more fast-paced rogue light games, and I think that a lot of people will be more attracted to that gameplay than the sort of slow paced, grindy gameplay that comes in Good Night Night. So it's not so much that this game isn't a solid offering, it's that the competition out there right now for roguelites is so, so harsh that this one I 
think will have a little bit of difficulty finding a niche. And ultimately, because roguelites require such a time investment, you sort of can't play 12 of them at once. You sort of have to select two or three that you play at any moment's time and really dedicate a lot of hours to progressing throughout those games. So now that brings us to the verdict on this game. And if this is the first video of mine that you're watching, just to let you know, I do not give a numerical score. I give an overall statement on whether I think you should consider buying this game or not. If you want to see what all those statements I use are, they're down below in the description of the video. And in this case, Good Night Night is going to be getting a solid game. However, I do want to specify it's a very high solid game. It's almost a definite pickup. As I said, if it wasn't for the really, really harsh competition in this genre of game, it might even topple over into that category for some people. In the end, if you like roguelite gameplay and you like slower paced games to what currently is out there, I think that $12 for this game is a definite, definite good investment. So as I said earlier, it's maybe not going to be everyone's favorite roguelite, but if the correct type of player chooses this game, it is probably going to find a pretty dedicated audience. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, just on the way out, don't forget that if you did like this video and you want to see more, please hit that like button. It is the best way to support the channel. Also, subscribe if you aren't already. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.